Using the intuition we've gained for derivatives, we make the following definition. So we consider a function from Rn to Rm and let C be a point in Rn. F is said to be differentiable at C if and only if there exists a linear transformation Let's denote it by dcf. And we'll think of this transformation as the differential of f at the point c from rn to rm such that, and let me point out that we'll look at functions that are defined on different domains, such as a, and the linear transformation will still be defined on all of rn. So there exists a linear transformation d of f at c such that the limit as h approaches 0 of the following expression motivated by our previous discussion, f of, let's see, c plus h minus f of c minus d c f evaluated at h divided by h itself. And this limit equals 0. dcf, when this happens, dcf is known as the differential of f at c. And a question immediately should arise, even if such a differential exists, how do I know it's unique? Namely, if I had another linear operator that satisfied exactly the same equation, is it necessarily true that these two linear transformations are the same? And one can prove that they are. Now, as I was mentioning briefly while I was describing the definition, f might, defi might be only defined on a smaller domain. So if f is defined only on some open set containing c, so if c is in some open set, then this expression still makes sense for all h sufficiently close to c. You can see that this definition has absolutely no, it doesn't include any information from the function f for large h. All we care about is the proximity of the point c. A similar definition can be made. And again, the linear transformation is still defined on all of Rn, not just some smaller a subset around 0 or anything like that. And if such a differential operator exists, that's, what we all, that's another terminology that we could use sometimes, um, what we can do is we can evaluate this linear transformation at very specific vectors at C. So let me draw a hypothetical domain. Here's the point C, and let me draw two vectors. Let's say this is the vector E1, this is the vector E2. If we have a differential operator, uh, a differential at the point C, then we can evaluate it at any vector in Rn. In particular, we can evaluate it at the unit vectors in Rn. And we're thinking, um, very importantly, we're thinking of these vectors at the point C. 
It's a small technicality, but think intuitively whenever you draw these pictures that these vectors are somehow attached at the origin C, even though C might not be the origin in our Euclidean space here. Now, using this, we can actually write down a matrix associated to the differential at C using this basis. And that matrix is called the Jacobian. So the Jacobian matrix associated to the differential of f at c, of course f is a differentiable function at c such as above, is the matrix given by the following coordinates. So we'll denote this matrix with a square bracket just so that um, we have notation that distinguishes it from the linear transformation which, is, which makes sense for any basis. Here we're describing what it looks like for a specific basis. Then this is given by taking the derivative of f, evaluating it at the first vector, let's say e1, and then taking the inner product of that vector onto the first one. This would be the first entry of the matrix. The second entry of the matrix would be taking the derivative, evaluating it at the second unit vector, and then projecting it onto the first, and so on. And likewise, if I go down in this direction, I'll still take the derivative and evaluate it at the first vector, but this time I'll project onto the second unit vector, and I'll keep doing this in this fashion. And let's make sure that the, we actually get an M by N matrix with these subscripts. So here, E, this E is an element of Rn, the domain of this differential, of this differential. And this element, after we apply the linear transformation, gives us an element in Rm. So after we do this, this is in Rm. Therefore, this has to be an Rm for this to even make sense. So when I go down this list, I have to make sure the last entry is the nth unit vector. And it is, if I work this out. And this entry, if I go in this direction, I ran out of space here, is the first entry is the last unit vector in Rn, which is En. So indeed, we get an m by n matrix. And this matrix is called the Jacobian matrix of the function of the differentiable function f at c. I just reminded myself that a function is differentiable on its entire domain if and only if it's differentiable at every single point in its domain. So that's also another definition. And then we can define this differential at every single point. And we'll discuss this more later as we vary this point C, and we study the behavior of this matrix as C varies as well. And we'll even also look at the behavior of this as F varies, and that's a whole nother level of complication, but for now we'll just focus on this differential.